we meet in this subject, on this subject, in sadness, because we are always, uh, it might not be fully apparent to others, but mourning what the Senate used to be, the Senate that we lost, where uh, we could easily respect the positions of Republicans who were opposed to our views and legislative engagement on the Senate floor and sometimes come out with a compromise solution, sometimes not. Uh, but never think that we were up against a force that was trying to either destroy the Senate uh, or harm the country in any way. Well, thank you, Lawrence, for having me. And of course, you and I go back in the Senate and we look at the Senate and the long decline of it with sadness. On the other hand, I was interested in updating the book to find that in 2022, for instance, the Senate actually came up with quite a few bipartisan accomplishments. President Biden and Senate Leader Schumer unified the Democrats for the most part, and then were able to find a dozen or 15 Republicans for the first gun safety legislation in a long time, the Marriage Equality Act, the Chips and Science Act. I think the Republicans, to some extent, wanted to make up for their catastrophic failure in failing to stop Donald Trump. So the Senate, with Democratic leadership and control, can actually accomplish some things, which makes this election cycle so critically important to keep the Senate majority, which is now hanging by a thread. Yeah, and that, so that's what's at stake in any, every one of these elections, whether, uh, you know, you might not think your particular Senate race in your state matters very much to you, but control of the Senate, who's going to be the chairman, who's going to run these committees, who's going to be in control of the way it works, which party, uh, that's just night and day. You know, it wasn't, wasn't always that way. Mm -hmm. We had shifts in the Senate, if you go back in 1980 or 86, Control shifted, and yet the Senate tended to function either way because the senators had a concept of what the Senate was about. They knew how to do the business of the Senate. But as we've become a more polarized country, and in recent years, the control of the Senate is an absolutely critical imperative. We had the Biden administration and the Schumer majority Senate, which contrasted so dramatically from the McConnell-controlled Senate, which failed the country and gave us the extreme Supreme Court majority that has imperiled our rights uh, in, on a continuing basis. You uh, you have a quote uh, that I had actually forgotten uh, in this edition uh, from Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who I worked for, uh, where he makes the point, he said, in the next century, America is going to have to consider uh, how the representation uh, pattern in the Senate, the two per state, and how that has turned out in a way that the founders could not have imagined with a state the size of California having two and one of the, each Dakota having two. Uh, and so that people are wildly overrepresented in the Senate uh, from some states, wildly underrepresented in the Senate from other states, uh, as such that now uh, you pointed out that, uh, that, that, that there's about nine states where you have almost a majority of the country uh, represented by only 18 senators. It's, the Senate's legitimacy uh, hangs on that. Uh, the notion that California has only two, uh, two senators, when Wyoming has two senators, uh, offends our concept, and yet it's baked into the Constitution. What was the solution to that in practical terms? In practical terms, it was that so many excellent senators came from small states, mm -hmm. and they proved to be, whether it was South Dakota mm -hmm. or Vermont, all over the country, small state senators, Montana, like Mike Mansfield, proved to be great senators. And as a consequence, the Senate operated, and we weren't so conscious of the, of the disparities in population. 
But when the Senate breaks down, then the inequity of California having two senators and as opposed to Wyoming having two, that's striking to us. And uh, as you have a proposal in the book for having at-large senators, uh, a, a group of senators, 15 maybe, who are elected nationally. Well, that is, a, that is my, my idea, um, and I'd like people to think about it at some point. Fundamental change in the Senate is probably years off. But I thought if you elected 15 senators nationally, these national senators would have a different sense of their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. They would upgrade the Senate overall. And I think they would encourage the other 100 senators to think about their commitments to the national interest, as opposed to simply being representatives of their state or party members. Um, the Senate's deteriorated quite a bit because the senators have become fundamentally partisan operatives. Many of the Republican senators particularly became partisan operatives as opposed to people who were looking at the national interests. When we get to the other side of this election, we have to talk about Ira Shapiro's uh, reform of the Senate ideas. Uh, the book is The Betrayal, How Mitch McConnell and the Senate Republicans Abandoned America. Ira Shapiro, thank you very much for joining us once again tonight. Thank you, Lawrence. Good to be with you. Thank you.